Hey everyone, Age of Matches here. Today we're doing a review on the LEGO Ninjago Legacy Monastery of Spinjitsu set. The item number for this is 70670 and this comes with 1070 pieces and it retails for $80 in the US. The set also comes with 8 minifigures and on the back of the box you can just see all of the functions. Fully complete, the monastery is a fairly sizable structure which is split apart into two different things so let's go ahead and take a look at the main structure first. Now this main structure is easily the biggest part of the set and it's actually split up into three different areas. The middle section is the biggest and most prominent part of the whole thing. It extends all the way up to this top structure but let's start with the bottom first. The bottom section doesn't have all that much with it. It's mainly just a small little area for Wu to drink some tea, and there is a little bit of detailing going on there, and it does have one function. Along the back of the monastery, there's a gear, and when you push that in, the front steps come out and you can spin it to swing a blade, so you can knock some skeletons coming to attack Wu. The top tower-like section, if you will, doesn't really have any functions in it, but it is a pretty nice detailed section. The middle part has a little sticker and behind it you can actually see the shuriken of ice. Moving further up there is another sticker which doesn't have anything behind it but it is clear as well as two flags coming out of the sides which are also both stickers and those flags are both adjustable. And then on the very very top there's just a small little bit of detailing. Now on the back side of it you can see they leave it pretty hollow along the middle and they actually have a little spot in the section where it looks like you might be able to put a minifigure but the opening is too narrow so you can't actually put a minifigure in there so it kind of looks a little bit incomplete. The middle section is very very open but I think this is okay because they have the shuriken of ice there and they actually have storage for the second shuriken which is really nice and very appreciated and then the bottom looks pretty good and once again you can see that gear for the function. On the right side of the monastery we just have two little shrines for the nunchucks of lightning and the scythe of quakes which we'll take a closer look at later and you can also see a ton of small little details for example right here they have a olive green flat stud to just kind of represent some grass and greenery they also have these little lanterns which they actually have a couple of them spread across the whole thing and they also have this roof detailing which looks pretty nice as well as these side little areas but the main thing that you can actually do here is this part right here you can actually push down and it launches the chicken this is the best function ever. The only thing that is a little bit kind of annoying with this is the way that they have this built, they obviously have the loose pins, but because the pins are loose, it is kind of really easy to accidentally move these windows. So that's the only kind of a complaint I have with it, but it's overall a pretty nice thing and that's just a small little nitpick and kind of a small sacrifice. But they do have a little bit of things in the back that do try to prevent that. The left side of the monastery has a very similar build to the right side. You can see a lot of the same details, but the main thing here is that they have another function. Now you can see they use this new gear piece, new for 2019, and what happens here is you can spin the sword and you can reveal the sword of fire hiding in the back. It's a pretty nice thing, works very well. The only thing is that it is kind of a little bit inconsistent in terms of how fast you can actually get a spin out of it because there aren't a lot of good areas to really grip it like you come in the back and if you want to get a quick swing it's very very difficult so if I had to do a nitpick here it would just be that when you want to kind of do a fast swing at a minifigure it is kind of a little bit hard to do because of the way it's kind of laid out here but otherwise it's a very nice thing also one last thing to note before moving on, this is a very stable structure, you can very easily pick it up like this, you can shake it around, nothing's falling off. It's a very very solid thing and very well built, which I do want to mention because I think it's some really nice design work by LEGO. Now the front section of this gate is a lot less interesting than the back section, but let's go ahead and get through this really quickly. So first off, right at the front, you have this door opens very easily, goes all the way to the side, works very well, and does exactly what it should. Also in the front they do have this pagoda structure which I think looks pretty nice and it is very stable so you know, don't have to worry about it falling off or anything. 
Along the side over here you can see we have a little tree build, looks nice, they also have once again one of those lanterns, and then on the other side there isn't really much there. Okay we did, now let's move to the back. So yeah, this might not look all that interesting at first, but trust me, it's a lot cooler when you really get into the details. But let's start off with the functions here. So right here on the right, we have a pretty simple one. There's just a little sword and you can move it up and it reveals another thing which just has a little exclamation point. And it also does have an apple and a banana in case you want to get your nutrition in. And on the left here, we just have this small little training dummy. You can spin it around like this, it goes very fast, it's pretty good. But there isn't really much to say here because what it is, is what it is. It spins around and it looks like this. There isn't really much else to say. But now let's get into my favorite part which are the details. Now some of you may have noticed that there are four stickers on this set. And they're all actually four stickers depicting events from Ninjago's history. So on the left side next to the training dummy, you can see the Oni masks all kind of rising up and the resurrection of Garmadon which is very cool. To the right of that, you can see Zane sacrificing himself to the Overlord. They also have a sticker of Chen. And then on the far right, they have a big sticker, which is the Great Devourer and the Ninja battling it. These are all really, really nice details that a lot of fans, I think, will appreciate. They're all very nice looking, and they're all just really cool to see. Also, another thing to note about these little training things here is that all of them are adjustable and you can actually remove them if you want to. The minifigures in this set from left to right are as follows. Whiplash, Sensei Wu, Kai, Nia, Zane, Jay, Lloyd, and Cole. Whiplash is the only exclusive figure in this set, but I do think Whiplash is the worst one. And I think it's pretty obvious what we don't really like about this one. I think they kinda done goofed on the skeleton design a little bit. They got rid of the armor in favor of a new head mold, and I'll give it to them, the head mold actually is really nice and it looks really good, but it's too small and it doesn't leave room for them to put armor, so they had to try to put these little shoulder pads, and it just doesn't work. And for some reason, uh, the Whiplash here is depicted as a lightning skeleton, even though he was an ice skeleton before, so that's a, that's a thing. Sensei Wu is actually a very accurate figure compared to the original one. This one feels like they literally just tried to remake the other one as is. And it really shows here, and I think it looks really, really nice. Kai is a pretty simple one, he looks nice, and he does use a new hood mold for 2019, which is going back to the One Piece setup that they had from before. But I don't really like it because the hood's just, it's too big, and you can't fit any shoulder armor of any sort because of how far they have the little kind of like tail attachment going which is a really dumb design choice to be honest because you have all these nice little pieces that make them look a lot cooler in my opinion and you've just completely got rid of using them for really nothing. Nia I like a lot, Nia looks nice. I like the gray more than the dark red but I think this minifigure is really cool. Zane, once again another good one. Jay is pretty cool, like him, and he does have the new Nunchucks of Lightning, which I think are an improvement on the original. They're pretty much the exact same thing, but the exception is they use the new dragon pieces on the bottom, which I think look nice. Lloyd, another good one, and Cole, who I think the minifigure looks really nice, and the side of the Quakes is a lot better in person, I think, than it is in pictures. It's actually not that bad. So this set comes with two of these things. So what these are are basically two handles to let you do spinjitsu. So basically what happens, you put a minifigure on the top somewhere on the studs, there's a tire on the bottom, and you roll it around and the tire gives you good traction and you can kind of battle with them. And this is an interesting concept for me because I can see a lot of people really liking this, but I can also see a lot of people who aren't going to care at all. For me, I think this is really nice, especially since they give you two of them, because you can battle with them really, really well, and the monastery has so much space in it, where it really makes sense here, and I think it'll be a really nice addition. But it's also kind of like, well, you, you did all those spinner sets, and those are kind of the same thing, but probably a little bit better. So, I'm not really sure what the I would really say about this because I can see a lot of opposing arguments for this but I'm gonna say overall it's a pretty good thing here so overall thoughts 
I think that this is a really, really nice set. Now, I do think it is a little bit lacking in play features in the monastery itself because really, a lot of them are just kind of different iterations of the same thing, and the only real diversity you're going to get here in terms of functions is that chicken launcher, which I do like a lot, but everything else is just kind of the same thing, but just in different areas, which is going to be a little bit repetitive for some people. Now, the actual build looks really, really nice. I cannot explain to you guys enough how good of a solid display piece this set is going to be especially when you take into account that this is an $80 set, okay? This is a thousand pieces and it's an $80 set. That's a really good deal. That's a lot of stuff for the price that you're paying for it. Minifigure wise, I think it's nice. I think it's really nice that you get every single one of the ninja in here, but I do wish there was more villains because I mean, one villain's a little bit, a little bit kind of small here. It's a really big set, but you only get one bad guy, so it's a little bit outnumbered. The little spinjitsu handle spinner things are very gimmicky. I think a lot of people will like them, but I also think a lot of people won't care. It's going to be a mixed bag, but I think overall it adds a lot of play value, especially for this set because it's such an arena-like build. But yeah, that is it for my review on the Monastery of Spinjitsu. Very, very nice set. I definitely would recommend it, especially if you can get it on sale, because it's a good deal, as is already, so if you can get it on sale, then it's pretty much a steal. But that is it. Thank you guys for watching. Till next time, this is HF Masters saying goodbye.